it's a Friday night, and you and five of your friends go out for pizza, and you're the only one who brought your wallet. Like the good friend you are, you foot the bill, and everyone promises they'll pay you back later. This has nothing to do with my speech, by the way. I just needed someone to complain about my weekend, too. On a serious note, though, let's take a look at what happened. You bought pizza and trusted everyone would pay you back. Pretty simple, right? Well, what if you could remove trust from this equation? Since the dawn of humanity, people have bartered. I give you nuts for your berries, or I sharpen your tools and you protect my family with them. And this system of trust works great on a local level, but what happens when I want to buy berries from a stranger who lives one village over? They might give me the wrong amount, they might give me a box of rocks, or they might not give me anything at all. As you can see, the need for trust in a transaction significantly increases as we find trading partners we're less familiar with. Eventually, we decided to fix this problem by using a middleman. Now, a middleman could be the messenger between two villages, but it could also be companies like Airbnb, Uber, or Amazon. The problem with a middleman, though, is you don't remove the need for trust from a transaction. You just place that burden on the middleman. So how do we remove the middleman from the equation? Well, you might be surprised to learn our answer lies in the technology behind Bitcoin. In 2008, there was a financial crisis that rocked our global economy and caused many people to lose trust in banks. Shortly after this, Bitcoin was created. Bitcoin is a digital currency powered by blockchain technology that allows us to send money to each other without the need for a bank in the middle. So how does any of this work? Well, to understand how a blockchain works, you need to understand a traditional database. So in a traditional database, there is one central trusted ledger where all the data is stored. A library computer might be an example. If you borrow a book or if you return one, this data is stored on the library's computer and everyone trusts a library will keep data accurately. As for blockchain, it looks something like this. Rather than using one central trusted ledger, we use a network of computers that all has the exact same copy of that ledger. Data can only be added to this ledger and never edited or removed. And if anyone tries to cheat the system in any way, or if they try to do anything fishy, all of the computers on the network can cross-reference their copy of the ledger and spot the phony. So why would everyone want a computer with library data on it? They probably don't. Uh, a blockchain, a library is a great example of something we don't need a blockchain for. A blockchain shines in situations where we need to record data, but we don't trust one party to do that. For example, if we held an election using blockchain technology, we could securely place our votes, we could tally them much quicker, and we would leave no room for doubt as to whether our votes have been altered in any way. But that's not all that a blockchain can do. By removing the middleman with blockchain technology, we can get loans with lower interest rates, we can pay musicians without Spotify taking a cut, and we can make card title transfers much simpler and shorten the line at our DMVs. Okay, well, no promises on that last one. Great. So we have this revolutionary technology that's gonna make our lives thousands of times better. What's the problem? Blockchain technology sucks. Blockchain developers are trying to solve an issue called the blockchain trilemma. In a, future, in a perfect world, a blockchain is decentralized, scalable, and secure. To put that in English, 
A blockchain should be decentralized. It should be ran by a large network of computers and not one central database like our library was. A blockchain should also be scalable. It should be able to process a high volume of transactions quickly. And a blockchain should be secure. It should work as it was designed to work, and it should be able to defend itself from attackers. Even though a blockchain should have these three traits, blockchain developers need to pick one side of this triangle to be on. If we take a look back at Bitcoin, for example, it is decentralized and secure, but it's not scalable. Visa processes thousands of transactions per second. Bitcoin processes seven, seven transactions per second. Now, other blockchains might process more transactions, but this is at the cost of being less decentralized or less secure. But this isn't our only tech issue. Blockchains also aren't interoperable. This just means blockchains can't send data to other blockchains. So if your medical records are kept on your family doctor's blockchain, these records can't be sent down the road to a doctor who uses a different blockchain. Now, I wanna make it clear that these technical issues are being worked on, and there are plenty of promising solutions under development. But until we can use blockchain technology without feeling the limits of its capabilities, it's probably not a better solution than our current system. But tech isn't our only problem. What about our legal system? When you remove the middleman, who do you hold liable if a problem comes up? And if we use a global computer network, which country's legal system do we follow? Another fascinating legal concept I found was the right to be forgotten. It's this idea that people have the right to have private information removed from the internet at their request. Now, I'm sure you've been told that what you post on the internet stays forever. And this is mostly true. But when you give data to a blockchain, it is virtually impossible to delete. That's an intentional part of a blockchain's design. But there's no deleting something the next morning, and there's no asking Facebook to take it down for you. When you give data to a blockchain, it is stored forever for anyone to see. What's possible with blockchain technology may not be legal or moral in the world we live in. The world we live in is also hard to keep up with. A few years ago, everyone called Bitcoin drug money, and today, you can't watch the Super Bowl without crypto ads being shoved down your throat. So is blockchain technology a fad or will it change the world? Well, there's this quote I really like that says, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting its pants on. The truth is that blockchain technology has great potential for problems it can actually solve. But trying to use blockchain for everything is like cutting butter with a chainsaw. Sure, it'll work, but there's definitely better tools for the job. So although a blockchain may not save me from overdue library books and pizza freeloaders, the thought of having technology that can revolutionize parts of our governments, economy, and possibly so much more is definitely an idea worth exploring. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know that the future of our world and blockchain technology will be written by those brave enough to try. Thank you.